This time on Ask Rad Rat, we're talking about some of the worst levels in the Tony Hawk series. We're also talking about all the strange little subcultures in skateboarding and where they came from and how they got to be more included. Let's do it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel where you can learn new things about skateboarding or at least hear my opinions on them. I'm answering a few of your questions from the Ask Rad Rat submission form on my website. You can go there if you want to submit your own. First one is from Raider. It says, I just watched your Tricks and Tribulations video episode one. You talk about a freestyle trick that you have been doing for 15 years and you wanted to add in a late heel flip. Why did you give up? I think you should try to relay that trick because you were very close. Maybe redo that video for a new Tricks and Tribulations video. So if you haven't seen that, there is episode one of my Tricks and Tribulations video, which is actually episode two, because the first one was a trick that I just couldn't possibly do. So it was a right guest flip late heel flip. Right guest flip, I'll just show you one. It's easier to show you what it is. I was trying to do that. Uh, you can catch that trick pretty high. So I was thinking like, what if instead of catching it, I do a late heel flip? And I actually got pretty close. Uh, I mean, close enough to know that it's possible at least. I did one and landed and put my hands down. I landed on the rail and put my hands down. Like, I had some reasonable close attempts. But here's the thing. I have eight hours of footage of me trying that trick. I don't mean I skated for eight hours. I mean eight hours of attempts. Like, you know, no camera during warm up or during breaks or anything like that. I'm filming eight hours of attempts and I could do them pretty quickly. I don't have to go back and push and come back. You know, it's just right there in that, in that, main, in that stationary freestyle pad that I made. So um, I, I don't even know how many attempts that is. You know, it's probably like a thousand at least. Uh, of me trying that trick and I got close a few times. So my plan from that was I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to get really good at just the base flip uh, without the late heel flip. Just the the right guess flip. I'm going to do it over and over and over. I'm going to get, I'm going to get really good at it. Um, and that I haven't had a chance to do that yet because even though it's mid-April, um, you might be seeing this the beginning of May. I'm not sure when this is going to come out, but uh, in mid-April, it's still snowing consistently. Um, I've been working a lot, so I'll work until dark every day. And then on the weekends, I'll have like four or five inches of snow. So it just hasn't really been practical at this point. But over the summer, I think every time I skate, I'm going to try to skate as much as I can when it's, when it's possible, when it stays light out later. I'm going to try to you know land five of them in a row or something like that. Get really good at them. The thing is, even though I can do the trick relatively easily, it doesn't always act the same. Sometimes it gets really high and you catch it and it stays right with you. Sometimes it gets away from you, you know, but it doesn't It doesn't get as high. So you don't catch it, but you can still land it and you just kind of roll over that way once you do. Like it can do a million different things. If I could do it, make it do the exact same thing every single time consistently, then I'll go back to the late heel flip because I just can't put myself through another eight hours of that and who knows whether I get it or not. Um, also doing the exact same motion for eight hours. Um, this was spread over, I think, four or five days and um you get sore in like really weird ways you know like you're working this one little muscle in your calf or something like that it sucked but uh, anyway there are actually two more lost episodes of uh tricks and tribulations that i tried one was a casper 360 flip which i did when i was like 14 um i landed a casper 360 flip i cheated i started with my foot on, uh, on the ground but then I lifted up into a real casper and then did the 360 flip so the trick itself was equally hard. I just cheated to get into it, you know. But I, I tried that for a good long time, and I just wasn't getting it. And I, I realized that even if I did do it, it wouldn't be that impressive. Like, that's it's a really hard trick. It kills me. Like, I can do a 360 flip about 100% of the time. But I need to do a 361 and a half flip to land on the grip tape. And it's brutal. So I ended up not ever landing that one, and I threw that video away. And then one I tried to do a couple weeks ago was a kickback to rail, kickback out. And this is what a kickback is. So it's like a quarter flip, then you catch the grip and you flip it like one and a quarter flips back. So the idea was to do that to rail and then set back up and make the, and do like a half flip, catch it on my toe and flip it back again and land that, which I thought was going to be relatively simple and I've never seen that combo before. So that would be kind of cool, you know, like... It, there's a million freestyle combos that are NBDs, which it just doesn't mean as much. Um, but yeah, I, I've never seen that before. 
and I just thought it'd be cool. And I could do kickbacks pretty easy, so it seemed like it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But that one was really, really hard because the technique to landing something on the rail on purpose is to keep your body low, and then as soon as the board comes around, you like slam your feet down and catch it. Catch it on like the nuts of the wheels, you know? Problem is, um, that trick starts with one foot on the bolt, bolts one foot in the middle. If you move your foot away from the middle, it'll spin. So it ha has to be in the middle. Then you flip and immediately have to jump over to where the other truck is. And it's really hard to do that consistently. So it felt like I was just kind of getting lucky. You know, if I did land it to the rail, which wasn't super often, it would feel like it was just pure luck. And then I would, uh, I, I got one attempt where I did the first kickback, landed to rail dead solid. Felt perfect. I got set up for the second part, flipped it, and then it kind of glanced off my foot and I missed the flip out and I was so disappointed <laughs> and I just gave up because yeah um, it was just luck if I did eventually get it it wouldn't have really felt like I earned it you know and uh, I was also sick at the time um, lots of coughing and fevers and it was tough to have energy okay next question is from Zondi who nope that is not the next one the next one is from Marcus Elliott Thanks for shaving your beard. I didn't think you would do it, but thanks. So a few videos ago, um, Marcus Elliott writes in and says, hey, uh, shave your beard, it looks bad. And I replied on video in an Ask Rider video, and I said, hey, I'll do whatever I want. Mind your business. And then uh, that video, I uploaded it. About three weeks later, when it did publish, I was really bored and locked down, and I shaved, and I happened to make another quick another quick video and I didn't have a beard anymore but I did not shave it for you Marcus I shaved it because I was really bored and it's back so deal with it now we're at zone D and he says or she for say the first six or seven Tony Hawk games which levels would you say are a real chore to play through and which do you find rewarding um so most of them are good so I, I just picked I just picked the bad ones um, in Tony Hawk 1, I would say the mall and downhill jam. I just hate those. They're not good. You know, if you miss something, you gotta turn around and skate uphill and it doesn't work. In the original version, in on like the PlayStation 1, when you get to the end, it just ends your run. You don't like restart at the top, which you did when they remade it, you know, in all the different different times they remade those levels, you could do that. But I just, I have the worst time with those. I hate them. Uh, you have to play them over and over and over. Like the mall, you can't possibly do three or four things in one run, no matter how good you are. You have to do only a couple because you have to go everywhere. It, I just don't like those. In two, I would have to say New York. I recently played it. In uh, New York is like there's the main level, and then there's a wall, and then there's like the whole second area. And that second area has almost nothing in it. There's a couple cash icons. The secret tape is over there, and that's it. So, like, you have this really small level that isn't really well connected. There's not a lot of lines. And then you have a whole big separate area that doesn't get used. So, like, I wouldn't say it's a chore to get through. It's just the weakest one in that game is all. In 3, I said cruise ship, although all the, the levels in 3 are pretty tight. Um, cruise ship is just, like, it's easy to miss something and go flying and, like, fall off the ship. You know, and that's kind of kind of annoying. It's also, like... It's a ship, so if you're at this deck, you know, like if the ship is up here and you're at the bottom deck, and you gotta skate all the way around to get to the other side to get to the next thing. It's kind of cumbersome, but again, it's it's good. Um, that whole game is really good, but that was probably my least favorite. In four, I would say Kona, uh, not because the level itself, although it is pretty weak. Um, I don't like the layout as much. There's a lot of dead space. It's a real place, so there's places for like people to hang out and sit down and stuff. But in a Tony Hawk game, it's just boring. It's just dead space. So I was trying to do high score combos in Kona, and like you grind at this little skate park section, and you just got a manual, 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 manual all the way over here, and then you can try to do some more stuff. Um, it's not as as good. And some of the challenges in that one, the uh, snake run challenge is brutal. Uh, what's the other one that's in there? Um, you have to do like a misty flip, which is really hard. For some reason and there's there yeah, there's a few things in that on that level that are the worst the worst level is probably the shipyard though you crash into stuff all the time it's the worst i have a series where i'm doing a tony hawk 4 with no stats that one is the hardest one 
and it gets the most frustrating, but I think Kona is probably, oh, that's a toss up. I wrote down Kona because I was thinking of the snake run, because I hate it. It's the worst challenge in the game, but the shipyard's probably worse overall. I don't know, toss up. The next one in, in Thug, I would say Russia. There's two challenges in, in Russia in uh, Thug that I hate. First one is the hair of the dog challenge, I think. So like you wake up the morning after a party and this guy gives you like a recipe for all the stuff you need to take to make you feel better. And so there's like these um, floating icons you have to get. And it's this crazy long line around like the whole level and you have to know where everything is. So you're skating along, you're, you're you're doing a grind and you're like a minute into this combo and then suddenly there's an icon up here somewhere. You know, oh, I didn't realize. The second you, you grab that last one, you had to jump off and do a wall ride up here, but you didn't know that. So now you gotta start over. And it's really hard, so you're trying to watch, but you're also trying to watch in your balance. I hated that one. The other one that really sucked is the uh, escape one. So it's like, the screen is all green because it's like night vision or whatever, and you're trying to sneak past guards, which would be fine if you're playing Splinter Cell or Metal Gear Solid or something like that, but you're playing Tony Hawk's Underground. So your, your guy, you know, you run, then you hit a wall and you just get stuck for a second. And you try to jump and your feet catch on the bottom of the ledge. And then next thing you know, the guards made his lap again and he sees you. It wasn't that hard because I played it again not too long ago. I didn't have as hard of a time as I did back in the day when it was new. But as far as that game is concerned, that one is the worst. For Thug 2, I said Berlin because there's lots of climbing in that one. It's not just skate challenges. It's like, hey, get to the top of this church steeple and spray your tag up there. But how do you do that? Well, you get a lot of air in the quarter pipe in the bottom. You jump off, grab your board, then grab onto the ladder, and you climb up. And then you got to shimmy over here. Then you got to jump over this gap on foot um, because you can't do it on your board because you go too far. So you have to jump over it on foot. Then you got to climb up this ladder, and you're on a timer. Eh, no, I'm not. I'm not into that stuff. There's a lot of climbing in that level. That isn't any fun. And then you said through seven, which would be Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, but that's one big level, right? So can't really pick one there. Okay, last question comes from Patreon, and it's Sean K. Um, he asked me a question recently that was similar, but we got a slightly different take on it. He says, um, I wanted to restructure my question after Ask Rider at 147. Love the series, keep it up, all that jazz. With that out of the way, when did skateboarding truly start to open up? My original question was along the lines of Flip focusing on uh, Glyphberg, Kerchart, Penny, Rowley from uh, from Europe. Zero was hardcore skaters. Element was more free spirit. Paul Birdhouse are pretty much vert. Um, the answer you have given before is that brands change with time. My question is, when do you think the big boom of skateboarding companies happen? Okay. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of a slightly different tack on it. He says that he would have loved if YouTube and Braille had been around in 2000 when he was skating and he would have stuck with it more. Um, so I did a lot of thinking about when you started to see weird stuff in skateboarding that wasn't just your standard stuff. And I would say it was around 2000 or so. So I started in 2001. But um, some of the stuff that I was became familiar with had been around for a couple of years. So there were always really small brands that did weird stuff. There was like a slalom brand. There was a couple of freestyle brands even then, but you just had to know where to find them. And I'll give you a couple examples. There was a video called the Casper video, which was made by Bobby Casper Boyden, the guy who invented the Casper disaster. And he put together this video of all this freestyle stuff. It was a lot of guys who were good at freestyle back in the day. A couple old pros like Primo is in the video. The guy who invented the Primo slide. Um, there's all kinds of names from freestyle in there. There's also uh, Nate Sherwood, who doesn't do any freestyle at all, but he does nothing but pressure flips. Um, and so like he was always kind of on the outside of normal skateboarding because pressure flips became uncool. No matter how big you did them, no matter what grind you did them into or how many stairs you did them down, they just weren't accepted. So he found a role in the freestyle community somehow. Um, I w he actually had a freestyle pro model that he didn't even use. But um, So Nate Sher Sherwood was in that. All these guys were in it. But like, how did you get this video? You didn't buy it from you know an ad that was in Transworld. You didn't see a clip of it in the 411 from that month or anything like that. You just had to know. You had to find the website and probably mail a check somewhere and then mail you a tape back. 
So there was the Casper video and then Casper made a deck company after that. I don't, I think that was after, I'm not sure, but people in the video are using different decks. So I think that he started a brand after that. There are a couple more, there was Skate Kings and Skate Kings um, still exists. And it's another sort of subculture brand. So there's freestyle in there. They make good freestyle boards. They also make uh, 360 spinning wheels. Um, so wheels for you to spin 360s on, not that the wheels themselves do anything, but they're steel so that they don't bend and or don't absorb impact and slow you down. Um, yeah, and like all kinds of stuff like that. And you just had to know about it. Um, what was another video? There was Capital. So there's a brand called Capital, and I believe their video is called Capital Punishment because they're very creative. And that they had a freestyle team. They had a... Nate, Nate Sherwood on there again. Lots of pressure flips and stuff, and they also would cut to like a freestyle guy doing actual freestyle tricks. And there were a few videos like that. There was, uh, in that video, J.J. O'Donnell, I, I believe this is the part I'm thinking of. His signature trick, you do a 360 shove it with a quarter flip and land to rail. And he does that in the video, in the intro, like 12 times straight in a row. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, and it, you could learn about freestyle from watching a video. It was mostly street but they were just okay with showing other kinds of stuff. They showed Weird Street with Nate, and they showed full-on freestyle on a freestyle board, like a 725 freestyle board. Um, and that was really cool, but you had to know where to get that. In Capital, I don't know if it was the same owners or whatever, but there was also a truck company that was somehow related, or they just shared some team members. I don't know what the deal was, but they had a video too, and I bought this video on tape. And I still probably have it at my parents' house somewhere. Next time I am in Michigan, I should grab it and, you know, have it ripped somewhere. But, um, yeah, and there was a guy named Rod Marks on there. And he did a a lot of really crazy street stuff. He did, like, a no-slide nollie 360 flip on this long curved hubba down some stairs. He did, like, a nose blunt nollie heel um, on a box somewhere. He did a dolphin flip on a hip, which is the first one I ever saw on, on video. I actually asked him personally about where the dolphin flip came from for uh, channel research. He said that he remembered that Gans did it um, in his hometown somewhere, and he disavowed the trick and said he never, or like, didn't ever do it again, but people in his hometown all learned it from him. Anyway, he was doing all kinds of really technical stuff that you wouldn't find in a mainstream skate video, but you had to know where to find it. Um, there was a lot of stuff like that. There is also Todd Falcon, who you may be familiar with if you got deep into the special tricks in Tony Hawk 4. There's a trick called the Falcon Slide, where you're kind of standing up. Um, you can't see my legs, but you have like one one foot up, and your board is balanced like this on top of the board, and you just kind of hop along the coping. Uh, that was based on Todd Falcon. Todd Falcon was a guy who skated a mini ramp in his garage, and invented lots of really weird tricks. And it was all like stuff like that. Flip the board over, catch it upside down, throw it back in, or, you know, get it up on your hand and have it like hundreds of tricks. And he was really, really uh, thought highly of himself because of all these tricks that he invented. I think it was in the hundreds that he invented. And you could you could buy his his uh, videos online, and he would send them to you. And you could watch a full length video, of like you know, heavy metal in the background, and him skating a, a two foot quarter pipe in his garage. And like before the two thousands, no one would have ever seen that, you know. And as we got into the two thousands, started to be possible. You had to know where to go. You weren't just going to run into it, but it got out there. And the Falcon slide is in Tony Hawk 4. So, like, it got out there that much, at least. People got to start to see this stuff. And at, at first, it was just a joke. So, the Falcon slide, obviously, is not really intended to be taken seriously in the game. It looks kind of stupid. And it doesn't really make sense as a slide. Um, it looks okay as a stall. But anyway, um, then there was Nate Sherwood had an interview in Big Brother. And I think that was, like, 2000 three or four, maybe, I think it was 2004. Um, and they're basically making fun of him. Um, it's sort of like a, the, the tone of the, the article is sort of like, look at this weird guy, 
you know, it's not it's not that serious. It's not like they're really respecting him and his time. It's just like, oh, I heard you do a lot of pressure flips. Huh? What's that like? Kind of like making fun of him to a degree. But if you bought a big brother, you would see sequences of a guy doing pressure flips. And if you went to the uh, site for his deck sponsor, you would have seen the freestyle board available there too. You might have been able to buy the video that showed all that stuff. And at that point is when things started to change where there was just little glimmers of, of uh, publication of this weird stuff, but it really took off in 2005 when you could go on YouTube and upload stuff. That was the big turning point. It's not just YouTube, because there was ways to share videos before that, but it was also people having access to digital cameras or being able to capture from tape onto their computer and share it. Um, and as soon as it wasn't just pros, as soon as your average person could put stuff online, 2005, 2006, 2007, that's when I think things really took off. And now we're mostly just seeing the the benefit of that. You know, like there's guys out there now that were big on the, the forums back in the day. There are a few guys that are big on Instagram that I remember as being like this big on the forums and like showing off their first kickflips. And now they're doing all this crazy weird flatland stuff. Well, they saw that stuff back in 2007. And now, after 10 years of practice, 13 years of practice, um, they can do ridiculous things that were never done before. So hopefully that answers your question. I think there was always weird subculture stuff going on, but it just wasn't known about until the internet came about. Before you could find an address to mail a check to and get a tape in the mail, um, it just wasn't really a thing. And so you could support those brands and buy small brands and stuff now that the internet was around. And it probably took around, you know, 2006, 2007 or so before you really started to see it take off. And then now is when you're seeing the results of it. So hopefully that answers your question. I know we went back and forth on that for a while to try to figure out exactly what kind of stuff you were looking for. But for those of you who are there, hopefully that was a nostalgic look through uh, what things were like. If you weren't there, maybe that gives you a glimpse of what we all dealt with way back in the Stone Age. But uh, that's it for now. If you have more questions, go to radratvideo.com and submit them on the homepage right there, and I will take a look for the next batch of videos. Um, also, you can tap my logo in the center of the screen to subscribe. You can click some of the videos over there that YouTube thinks you might like. You can hit the like button. You can tell your friends about the video. You can go to my store and buy a t-shirt. You can do all kinds of stuff to help out the channel if you so desire. But until next time, I'll see you. Thanks for watching.